Hello again, Gary Stearman with another Prophecy in the News update Thursday, June 17th. And on yesterday's update, we spoke about Gaza. And I mentioned a couple of things. One, that Gaza is featured in prophecy as a land that, that uh, shall be forsaken. Well, we saw the eviction uh, of Israel from Gaza not too long ago. And the takeover by uh, the Arabs and specifically by Hamas, in, in a sense, Gaza has become a forsaken place. But a prophecy yet to be fulfilled says, For Gaza shall be forsaken, Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. And that is a future prophecy from Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 4. At the same time, the world is condemning Israel for its tight blockade of Gaza. I thought I'd read to you a letter from a woman. Uh, her name is Sandra Oster Barras. And uh, Ms. Barras is the director of the what's called CFOIC, Christian Friends of Israel Communities. And she writes this letter. <clears throat> A Christians for Zion team, including senior citizens and young children from the UK, have just come back from a visit to Sderot and Kafar Aza near Gaza, where Israeli civilian communities are still facing the threat of a major attack from Hamas. Those we spoke to did not at any time speak words of hatred towards their Arab neighbors, who before the Intifada of 2000, uh, they used to live alongside in peace. Well, these peace-loving Israelis simply ask that we report the truth to the international community who they believe are so blinded to the realities of the present situation, so we promised we would do that. And here's the following report that she presents. Over 15,000 tons of food items, such as baby formula, wheat, meat, dairy products, and other perishables are transferred weekly to Gaza. Potato seeds, fertile eggs for reproduction, bees, their hives, equipment for the flower industry are among those shipments. During the first three months of this year, 94,500 tons of supplies were transferred from Israel into Gaza on 3,676 trucks. Well, that doesn't sound much like a, uh, a blockade to me. Uh, they're allowing, that it is the Israelis are allowing uh, vital materials, and food, and supplies to pass that border. <clears throat> we have this. During the week prior to our visit, now that would be probably about three weeks ago, uh, over 100 truckloads of animal foods, 65 trucks of fruit and vegetables, <clears throat> 22 truckloads of sugar, 27 truckloads of meat, poultry and fish, and 40 trucks of dairy products were transferred into Gaza with the help of the IDF, that's the Israeli army. In addition to these regular transfers, Israel, uh, Israel's ships uh, brought in 11,000 head of cattle, along with other supplies to help the Muslim population in Gaza uh, celebrate their holidays, such as Ram Ramadan. Israel maintains, she writes, Israel maintains a corridor for the trans uh, transfer of medical patients out of Gaza, and about 200 Arab medical staff members go through the crossings every month. Israel also helps coordinate the transfer of Jordanian doctors into Gaza. In 2009 alone, 10,544 patients and their companions left Gaza for medical treatment in Israel. The only difficulty to patients needing care in Israel is the documentation Hamas needs to supply to Israel to allow the patients access, and Hamas often refuses to assist their own people in supplying that documentation. In the first quarter of 2010, Israel shipped 152 trucks of medical supplies and equipment into Gaza. In a typical week in May this year, 37 truckloads of hygiene products were shipped to Gaza through the crossings. In addition to those new items, uh, a new CAT scan machine was sent across. Uh, she says, we met with people involved in medical care and were told that if it were not for the fact that Israeli doctors, nurses, and medical staff would be kidnapped and murdered by Hamas, Israel would send in and establish all the medical care needed in Gaza. Well, this is an entirely different report than you get from the Western media 
which features Israel as a foe of, of uh, Hamas in Gaza and, and an inhumane watchman, not allowing supplies to come in and so forth. Sandra Osterberis, who was there, and by the way, who reg she lives in Israel. She regularly talks uh, with uh, the people down near uh, Gaza in, in that area, and so she knows what she's talking about. <clears throat> the importation of cement and iron would be supplied, that is, would be allowed, except for the fact that Hamas is now using it to make rocket bunkers, so they have blocked uh, the shipment of supplies, such as any, any construction supply that might be used to build a bunker. And this the West refers to as a blockade, but it's not a blockade, it's simply keeping uh, anything that might be used as weaponry away from uh, your enemy. Over 133 million liters of fuel entered Gaza from Israel over the last 18 months. We're talking about gasoline. And this is despite the fact that Israeli workers face threats from jihadist snipers as this procedure takes place. So they deliver the fuel under the possible fire of snipers who are trying to stop them. It's, it's, a, it's an insane situation over there. I just thought you might want the other side of the story. When you think of the Israeli blockade against Gaza as inhumane, just remember, food and supplies are being allowed through, including gasoline. And sometimes the people delivering the aid and comfort to the enemy have to bear up under enemy fire. That's totally amazing to me. And we're going to continue, of course, the coverage of Gaza because it, it is a prophetic subject. Uh, Gaza being allied now with Turkey, with Syria, with Persia, or Iran, uh, puts it right square in the path of upcoming biblical prophecy. We'll keep watching, and uh, you stay tuned to Prophecy in the News as we deliver these daily updates. Gary Stearman, wishing you a great day. Keep looking up.